Today we're going to conduct an oxidizer test. We start out by placing, if we have a solid, two spoonfuls of the unknown on a watch glass. One, two, take a strip of oxidizer test paper, wet it with two drops of 2301, one, two, and then rub a dub dub. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Lift, look, and hold it above the watch glass for another two seconds. And we're looking for a deep blue black color, which is what we can see here on the oxidizer test paper. That's positive for an oxidizer if it happens quickly within, say, 15 seconds or so. Alright, let's try another one. Let's do a liquid this time. So for a liquid, we add 12 drops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. To a watch glass. Once again, a strip of oxidizer test paper. Wet it with two drops of hydrochloric acid, RE2301, and it's 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. Okay, once again, I have a positive oxidizer. You can see by the deep blue black color on the paper there. Alright, let's try it with another one. 12 drops of the unknown liquid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two drops of hydrochloric acid on my oxidizer test strip. One, two, and then it's one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Lift, look for two, one thousand. And you can see this time the unknown actually destroyed the paper, wilted it, turned it into a skinny black strip, turned it black. Now that's not an oxidizer. Only two things do that, concentrated sulfuric acid in the, for liquids and then phosphorus pentoxide if we have a solid unknown. Very significant reaction there. Alright, we'll try another one. Let's try this time a white solid. So we'll need two spoonfuls of the unknown on the watch glass. One, two, take my strip of oxidizer test paper, wet it with two drops of RE2301, one, two, and then one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, lift look. Now if I examine the paper very closely I can see that it has some little yellow spots on it where the unknown came in contact with the oxidizer test strip where the crystals of the white solid came in contact. So that's not a positive oxidizer but that yellow is an important observation. This substance was bismuth nitrate. Let's try another one. Here I have a blue solid. Take two spoonfuls of my blue solid. One, two, two drops of hydrochloric acid on my oxidizer test strip. One, two, and then it's one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Lift, look. And what do you see? Once again, looks like that would be considered a positive test. Okay, this one's actually a transition metal. This is a copper salt. This particular copper salt is not an oxidizer, so this is sort of a false positive. It's all taken account of when you actually use this test in the HazCat system. All right. We have a safety bulletin that we published on the oxidizer test strip that talks about all the different reactions that can occur 
uh, when you do this test and also all the false positives and false negatives. Very, very powerful oxidizers like ammonium nitrate, potassium chlorate will oftentimes not be positive when you use the oxidizer test strip in this manner on the watch glass. They won't reveal their oxidizing nature until you put a little bit of energy into them in the form of heat. And so we use the same oxidizer test paper during the thermal oxidizer portion of the thermal analysis to identify those energetic uh, thermal oxidizers.